All right, let's make this quick and simple. This is Typest for linguists. If you don't know what Typest is, it is essentially just another markup language that is aimed at doing what LaTeX can do, but with a friendlier syntax. And in my opinion, it does a good job at that. So in order to install Typest, you're gonna to wanna to go to their GitHub page or their website, or you can install it through their GitHub repo by doing basically anything. You can download pre-built binaries, you can use Rust if you want to. There's a Nix package for it. Um, you can maybe find it in your Linux distributions package manager. Um, yeah, now once we have it, we can just get started with typing in types. Types files work just like how any other kind of like markup language file would work, except the files end in .typ for type. And here's just some basic syntax. This is... Oh my God, this is a level one header. This is a level two. Yeah, and you see here, it compiles automatically. I'm gonna show you how it does that in just a second. You can also make lists. This is a, a list. This, this is another list. Cool. So we have the very basics done, right? This is something that you'd wanna do probably in any markup language, just like headers and lists. How I have this document being compiled automatically it is through here so inside of the types compiler it, it just gives us some commands that we can do so we can compile a file once we can compile a file on every file change or you can set up a project from a template so what i was doing is i was doing types watch name of the file and that's it cool Types is no different than something like LaTeX where you can change like your font, import images, do bibliographies, have like graphs or whatever. Like you can all do that in types. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. Before we get into the actual interesting linguistic stuff, I want to first show how you do citations. Now types is weird where you can't import a bibliography from a relative path everything needs to be done within the project itself, which is a little bit annoying, but what I've done here, I just have my bibliography. It's still in its same directory, but I've just created a sim link, a symbolic link to the file. So whenever types calls for this link, it's still gonna source the file in its native directory, but it's not actually there. This is kind of like a pointer to it. I don't know how you can do this on Windows. I don't care either, because I don't use Windows. But yeah, this is just what I do to get around that. I like to keep my bibliographies in their own folders and, and like name their own things depending on like what kind of topics I'm covering. It's something that I did in university and it's something that I still continue to do. So that's just my way of organizing a bibliography. So yeah, we have um, a bibliography. If you want to import a bibliography, you can do bibliography and then the name of the file. And we can just do like, an example header here, this is a, a paper. I'll just do, I believe it was, and then what we're gonna do here is we're going to just pick something completely random. Um, I don't have my uh, picker set up properly to have like a proper citation key format with types. The way how the citations work is that it uses the key exported by uh, Zotero or BibLaTeX and you put an at in front of it. And then that's how you source the citation. And you can see automatically it just showed up. So there are different ways of configuring how the citations actually show up, but I don't really care to do that right now. I'm just showing you that you can cite and it is pretty easy. So now let's get into the actual linguistic stuff. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. Glossing is something you have to do pretty regularly, especially if you're doing things with foreign language data. When you're glossing in LaTeX, it, it works, but it also looks really, really ugly. So with types, we're gonna copy and paste this from another file I have, and we're gonna import this. And this is the package for Leipzig glossing. So we're gonna import gloss and abbreviations. You can specify what you want to actually import from the file by just getting the name of like the module or the class or the function, whatever this is. Yeah, let's just do a quick gloss. 
So I actually don't have this all memorized. So we're just gonna take this again from another file. So what we have here is we have our little gloss. Um, I'm eating your head. I subject first person singular equals to B. Eat in the progressive second singular possessive head. I'm eating your head. Um, at least just looking at this, it's kind of easy to see where it gets everything from. The reason why it was failing compilation is because SG and SBG are not actually functions. They are kind of like macros. So you can import these abbreviations, which are included inside of the package by just specifying what you're actually using. Yeah, it might be a little bit annoying at first being like, oh my God, I used like prog and I need to go up here and specify that I'm importing progressive. But in my opinion, it's a lot better. This is also a lot more readable. I know like when you're working with LaTeX or something, you're not really reading the raw LaTeX file. You're always reading what's uh, compiled. But I think the way how this is formatted is really nice for someone who is getting into maybe technical writing and is, you know, intimidated by how weird LaTeX is. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. The second thing I'm gonna cover right now is IPA support. So in order to type out IPA stuff, we can actually do a couple of things. So in here, I have two packages. I have ASCII IPA and TY IPA. So if we're going to go over this first, so we're gonna use this first and we are going to quickly take the example that I had from here. This is for doing IPA transcriptions. And you see here, we have all the different types of brackets and we have our IPA characters actually rendering. And yeah, you can specify which brackets you're using by doing like, is this a phonetic, a precise, a phonemic, a morphophonemic or a prosodic um, transcription. But let's say we're doing something larger, right? And that's what this is. So yeah, we have this macro outputs this. We have these things here because we need to be able to escape what this character would be. This is very common when you're doing like regex stuff. It's weird because it uses the names, it uses its own idiomatic names, but they, it, they still have everything defined as you would normally want it. Uh, these are just short, this is just a shortened way, like a little macro, um, how would you call it? Idiomatic way of doing this. Yeah, and I just thought that this would be cool to include as an example. If you look at the actual package itself, it does go into more depth as to like how it works and the actual syntax for typing out different IPA characters. This is kind of like a macro on top of a macro, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. All right, and now last but not least, we have everyone's favorite thing and it's syntax trees. Let's go. So I actually was having problems with this package when I first started using it. But since this is all open source, I was able to make a pull request to this project's repository just to improve the documentation a little bit and all is fixed. So what we have here, we have a syntax tree, right? The way how it's written out is um, through here. I think this is somewhat similar to how it is done in LaTeX with the only difference being these being more, I don't know, friendly to look at. You can specify your font, just make sure that it is installed and actually available through your types. So if I do types fonts, these are all the fonts that types recognizes and that it can use in order to compile your document. Yeah, we have a nice little macro here in order to specify that this is supposed to be a triangle instead of it being its own node. And yeah, very cool, very cool, very, very useful. <laughs> so like I said earlier, I feel like this types focused workflow is mature enough for majority of students to get into using. And I honestly think that I can recommend it for any instructors or teachers or anyone who's interested in teaching their students how to use LaTeX, but don't actually 
want them to go through the headache of using LaTeX and they can instead use something a lot easier and modern like Typest. I know that LaTeX is a lot more widely supported and it is very legacy, but how about we give the new dogs some love, you know? Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another one.